So I think the diode laser market could be about to collapse. And honestly, I think it might already be happening. Raleigh Automation just announced that it's going to shut down soon, and I believe there's a few other companies we all know the names of that are circling the drain as we speak. Within a year, many of the brands we know and love could just vanish, maybe without any notice at all. It sounds dramatic, right? Well, stick around, because I'm going to show you exactly why I think this is happening, and more importantly, what it means to every maker out there. And yes, I'm going to name names, so let's get into it. Okay, to really understand why I think this collapse is coming, we need to rewind a bit and have a look at how diode lasers actually got here in the first place. It wasn't that long ago that diode lasers were honestly you know, they were kind of a joke. They were basically these glorified laser pointers that could maybe etch a logo into a piece of plywood, you know, if you were patient enough to wait for 20 minutes. But the industry exploded between 2020 and 2023, and it seemed like every six months there was a big leap forward. There were higher wattages, enclosures started to arrive, autofocus, dual laser modules, better software, and add-ons like rotaries. And suddenly what was a hobby toy turned into a tool that a small business could actually build itself around. And for a while, it felt like that innovation curve was going to be unstoppable. But, but now, things look very different, and every laser company has a 20, 30, 40, even a 60 watt laser. They've all got the same safety enclosures, same riser, same honeycomb, same accessories. It's like the whole industry hit copy paste and started churning lasers out by the thousands. The truth is diode laser innovation has stalled and it's been stalled for the last couple of years. And that's the first really big warning sign that there's trouble coming. Now here's the second problem. The entry level diode laser market is just absolutely flooded. If you go to Amazon or AliExpress, you're gonna see dozens of nearly identical machines that all cost five to $1,500 and they're all fighting for the same first time buyers. They might have different logos or slightly different colors, but at the end of the day, these lasers are all basically the same, just in a different box. And when everybody's selling the same thing, what happens? Well, it's a race to the bottom and prices keep dropping, margins shrink, and suddenly companies can't make enough profit to survive. That's why some of these brands are already in trouble. They're competing in a saturated space with no real innovation left to do and nothing separates them. It's just not a sustainable business anymore. And this brings us to the real impact of all of this. If you look at companies like Aitzer or Roly Automation, they're either already gone or they're leaving. And their machines were great, but they just couldn't survive in a market that was this crowded. And let's be honest, there are, are really a few more companies that are lined up right behind them, so be ready for it. Some of them are already suspiciously quiet, their websites haven't been updated, customer support is slow or even non-existent these days, and you don't see their new model showing up anymore. When profit margins disappear, companies can't afford innovation, they can't afford marketing, and they eventually can't even afford supporting their existing customers. And that leaves makers stranded with no warranty, no spare parts, and no one to turn to for help. That's the real cost of this potential collapse. It's not just companies, it's makers who are left holding the bag. So here's where I'm going to get a bit controversial and tell you where I think things are going to be headed through the end of next year, 2026. Some brands I think are definitely going to make it, but many I believe are going to fail. Let's start with some of the survivors, which in my opinion is really three significant brands. First is Xtool. They've built certainly more than machines. They've built an entire ecosystem and their software and accessories and partnerships give just a huge moat of protection. And they also have a huge market share. Adam Stack, whether you love him or hate him, I think is churning out good mid-level machines and they're certainly everywhere. They've got aggressive marketing and they do some reasonable model refreshes. And third on the list here is Longer. Uh, they've been around long enough to keep iterating at a steady pace. And they've got definitely some loyal users in their, in their user base. 
they don't build flashy machines, but they build quality and and it's definitely stable in a pretty shaky market. Now let's talk about the companies I'm guessing won't survive through the end of 2026. Now this is controversial, of course, but I believe in addition to the first two here that are already on the way out, the remaining brands are fighting for survival. So first on the list is Aitzer, Adam Stack's sister company. It still has a website on occasion, it's up and down, but I believe they appear to be out of business, and I'll say possibly because right now when I look, they're online. Rolly Automation announced that they're shutting down. Algo Laser, it has interesting technology, but they really have been struggling for traction. So I think they might be gone. Uh, Ortur, once great company, uh, just hasn't maintained its lane and it's been fading fast. Sculpt Fund, they're still selling, but I don't see them staying in the long term in, in a market the way it is. And Neje once made decent lasers, but they really just haven't changed in the last three years. They're still selling the same old thing. These companies are either too small, too undifferentiated, or even too quiet to make it through another year of shrinking margins. Note that all the companies on, on this list have been great at times. Most are friends of this channel, and these are really just my guesses, so I hope most of them survive, but the reality is, uh, there's some challenges coming, and certainly this is not a comprehensive list. Uh, other companies will survive for sure, but I believe that there's going to be quite a few that just disappear. All right, so what happens next? Well, diode lasers are clearly hitting a wall, and that leaves a question. Where's the maker business going to go? Well, I think we're gonna start in this coming year by seeing some consolidation. So a lot of companies becoming fewer companies. I believe that within a year or two, there's only gonna be a handful of diode lasers left. They'll be more like appliances. They'll be stable, reliable, but they'll be really boring because there's no innovation left. The real growth is moving to other technologies. So start with UV lasers. They're great for engraving almost anything, but especially plastics and glass. And now you can certainly do 3D the internal engraving. Uh, it's really an entirely new product category. Uh, fiber lasers are a great choice for marking metals, deep engraving, color engraving, you name it, any kind of metals. CO2 lasers are still around and they're sturdy. Uh, they're great. Uh, they're probably the best replacement for diode lasers as far as cutting. I'm on record as saying all three of these types of lasers, if you had them in your shop, you wouldn't need anything else because you could make everything. Now, for makers, the message here is don't put all your eggs in one basket. If, you're, if you've already got a diode laser, that's fantastic, keep it. But if you're looking to grow your side hustle, then you should probably expand into some of these other areas. So whether you, you know, you're upgrading to a CO2 for production work or a fiber for metals, or you know, you're even headed into that UV space for, for you know, marking glass, the future, no matter what, is in diversity. It's just, not going to work for diode lasers anymore. The, the, the companies that adapt in this industry are going to be the ones who survive. So here's the bottom line. The diode laser gold rush is over. Simply put, innovation has slowed, the market is flooded, and a lot of companies are just simply not going to survive the next year. But that doesn't mean it's the end for makers. Uh, far from it, really. If you built your business around a diode laser, that machine is still valuable. It just can't be the only thing you rely on. The future belongs to makers who can adapt and focus on creating products that customers actually want. And it doesn't matter what tool you're using. I know this is a controversial take on things, but some of you will probably disagree, and uh, that's okay. Feel free to keep this conversation going, leave a comment down below, and tell me which brands do you think are going to survive, and which ones do you think are already circling the drain? Even if you think I'm crazy, maybe this none of this is going to happen. If you found this breakdown helpful, uh, give the video a like uh, so that other makers can join this conversation with us. And if you're serious about growing your maker business beyond just diode lasers, hit that subscribe button because I've got all kinds of content coming that will help you thrive in a changing market. The diode era may be ending, but for makers uh, who are ready to adapt, it's just the beginning. So get out there, make your world, and I'll see you next time.